All right, well, let me just introduce myself. Uh, most of you I know, uh, I'm Ron Smith, Extension Entomologist at Auburn University. Uh, been there, this is my 45th summer, I believe, and uh, we've got a, uh, one of these emergency situations today we want to talk about that uh, don't come along very often. Uh, some of my counterparts and co-workers in other states and other disciplines, they never have anything uh, that occur like this in their whole career. Uh, I've lived through one of those before, uh, I'll have to mention uh, during the boll weevil eradication years when we had the resistant tobacco flood worms and bead army worms. If you were in the business then, you know what I'm talking about. It was it was serious and it was a disaster. And uh, I hate to use the word, but uh, we're bordering on that kind of seriousness today with the silver leaf white fly. Uh, let me just catch everybody up to where we were. This is what I put out on the blog Monday morning. It kind of sums up where we started, but a little history of the silver leaf white fly. And then uh, I'm not going to use up all the time, but I want a lot of give and take here. We'll talk, and uh, I'll share with you what I found out when, from people in other states that have, that have worked with this pest and dealt with it longer than I have. Uh, needless to say, it's a dev devastating economic pest of cotton. It started uh, maybe a little bit before last year, but in 2016, there was about a five-county area around Tifton, Georgia, that really, really bad, serious problem, just like we're facing here today. Uh, I was there the first week of September right after a tropical storm had come through. It had knocked out a lot of the adults, but every, every leaf was covered with amateurs at that point. So I saw it then uh, over there. In 2017, uh, Dr. Roberts uh, called me early. He said, I'm worried. He said, we're seeing white flies in June. And uh, so uh, they've been knowing it was coming over there. This problem down here didn't really come in until about the first week of August. Now, uh, we have recognized the silver leaf white fly as being in the state since 1997. Uh, one of our consultants picked it up in Mobile County around greenhouses. Uh, you see, this silver leaf white fly needs something to carry it through the winter. And white uh, uh, ornamentals and greenhouses are uh, the vegetable crops that they're growing around Tifton, Georgia is doing that. It's carrying them through the winter. And remember, we're set up by two mile winters. That's, all of these things are playing into this. Uh, following the uh, white fly, uh, the, uh, the cold crops during the winter is melon production. They love cucurbits, they love melons. So melons is just giving them a, a jumping place to jump right on through the winter into the spring and right on into our other crops. And that includes, to some degree, peanuts and soybeans. Uh, so we first saw it down there in 97. Uh, historically, this pest has been associated with the dry land cotton production areas of the United States. California, it's a routine pest they try to manage out there. Arizona. Uh, the Rio Grande Valley. In 92 and 93, I had a file on it. I've got more files than I thought I had. 92 and 93, it was a devastating situation in Arizona and the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. Uh, so this, these kind of outbreaks are not new. Uh, the insect has sucking mouth parts, if I could describe that or compare it to something we're familiar with, it's similar to aphids. Uh, now, the initial feeding is going to stunt the plants and suck, 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 suck the vigor out of the plant. But that's not really where the problem comes in with the silver leaf white fly. It's more serious, and the secretion of its honeydew is more serious. And uh, you, as you know, it's going to fall down below wherever the, wherever the, uh, the insects are feeding. And uh, during the growing season, the honeydew is a problem, but it's not a disaster. But the problem is this silver leaf white fly don't die off from natural diseases like aphids do. They continue, from the time they come in, they build to you defoliate. And there's not really much that checks them. Uh, rainfall suppresses them a little, the adults, but it's not, it's not do anything to the immatures. Uh, the first sign you're going to see of silver leaf white flies is going to be a, a few adults clustering in or around the terminal. Maybe underneath the leaves, sometimes you like to see them on top of the leaves. When you touch them, most of the time they're going to fly off. They're not flying very well this morning. Uh, our trial, I might just say, our trial up here was planted late intentionally with hairy leaf cotton. And we'll get to some of these things that creates a problem 
uh, later, but uh, they love late planted hairy leaf cotton. And uh, we went from being able to see adults last week to having 100 to 200 adults per leaf today with immatures on many of the under, on, on the lower side. Uh, uh, you, from the time you first see those adults till you really get an explosion is going to be two plus weeks. The life cycle is about 15 to 18 days. When it's 90 plus degrees, it's probably closer to 15 days. So from the time you see the adults, they deposit eggs, they should turn into a little crawler stage. You won't see them moving, but they, they are called a crawler stage. They move a millimeter or something, then they lock down at a feeding site, and then they're a scale insect. They're immobile the rest of their life until they come out as a, an adult again. And that whole cycle is about every 15 to 18 days. So you can see uh, they can build tremendous numbers. Uh, what we have suggested folks doing as far as making treatment decisions, of course, as this thing has exploded, the treatment decisions have gotten easier because a lot of fields have triggered. But what we want to do is look, is look at about the fifth node, fifth true leaf below the terminal. Flip it over and look for the presence of immatures. When you start seeing immatures, is, is what triggers 50% of the leaves got immatures on them. Now, as the growth of cotton slows down, you won't have to go to the fifth leaf down in order to get the leaf that's got the most immatures on it because that threshold was set up for actively growing cotton. If you know cotton has uh, about one node every, every three days, so life cycle about 15 days, uh, five nodes down, that's about what it would take for a generation to turn over. But as you get closer to the fall, you can come on up and pick out uh, just one or two nodes down or just, just look around. Look, look, find out where most of the immatures are at, and that's what you want to key on. It may be two nodes down. When we did that test here, uh, my son Shane was helping me eight or ten years ago, and he remembered that we had to change our threshold, uh, not our threshold, but our, our thing we were doing. Uh, this was real late. We made our last counts in October. Uh, but we had to move up the, up the plant some to get the leaf that had the most immatures on it. So just remember that. Nothing magic about going down five nodes. That would be for younger cotton. Uh, these are immatures. They're going to be flat, oval, fairly clear. They're going to begin to take on a little uh, yellowish color. Uh, and a lot of people are having a hard time seeing them. But remember, they're flat. They have no appendages. You're going to need a 10x magnification. You can get something at Walmart or something like that so you can look at them a little closer. But the presence or absence of these immatures is a good trigger for, for spraying this cut. Uh, now, aphids are going to be a little thicker bodied. They're going to have some appendages on them, uh, cornicles where they pop out the honeydew, and, uh, and uh, they, they're going to have a little slow movement. You'll see no movement on these scale insects, the white fly. Uh, let me just share with you some of the thoughts that uh, Dr. Roberts shared with me a couple of days ago. Uh, uh, it's kind of like if it's a few days old now, it's, it's almost uh, uh, out of date information. But he says, don't, uh, don't overreact to this pest, but I think we're already beyond that stage now. The important part of that sentence, but don't underreact to this pest. You can't just ride it out. Uh, this is the most important thing I'll say. If you get behind with controls on the white fly, you cannot catch up. You've got to stay ahead of them. Going back, we don't, we say don't do anything to aggravate the applications of a hard insecticide you make, the, the more you're going to trigger. Uh, so we want to be as selective as we can, not spray these others' pests any more than we'll have to in future years. I don't think our spraying and so forth got us to this point today, but in future years, just know that the least spraying we do and the most selective chemistry we use is the, is the way we want to go uh, in future years. Uh, how long is it, how long is it till cotton is safe from 
uh, civil leaf white flies the day you defoliate. So it's not safe to do to the defoliate. The objective would be to try to get to defoliation time you don't have to try to do. Like I said earlier, rainfall may knock back the number of adults a little bit, uh, and the damage potential is definitely going to be much greater on later planting time. I'm talking about late May into June. Uh, I've already said the hairy leaf business, even these cottons has semi-hairy leaves, and some of our more popular varieties of what we call semi-hairy leaf, they've got a little hairs on them. You want next year, thinking ahead now, you got to have the smoothest, you got to have an absolutely smooth leaf cotton. I don't think we can gamble with anything else. Uh, hot and dry conditions are favorable. So, actually the weather has been in our favor this summer. Controlling is going to be expensive. It's going to be real challenging, particularly since uh, this being a sporadic pest. Nobody knew to have the warehouses stockpiled with these materials that give the best control. Even if it had, even if it had been stockpiled, six or seven hundred acres being sprayed in Georgia would have used up most of the supply before we recognized we had a problem. Uh, there's two types of materials that against white fly. One is the type that actually will work on this immature stage under the bottom of the plant. There's two of those, NAC and Curry. Uh, NAC has been the product that's preferred because it works on eggs and the nymphs, the immatures. Don't say anything about adults now. Uh, courier works on the nymphs or the immature stages. A sail is, uh, and I made the mistake of not be, be, having been this correct on this here before the meeting started, a sail does have activity on all stages. It's not quite as effective as NAC and Courier, which are IGRs, uh, insect growth regulators. And, and by the way, let me say on NAC and Courier, you don't really see the effects until about 14 days out. So there's no need running back out there right quick and, uh, and look at you want to wait at least 10 days to try to assess the situation on NAC and Courier. These others that work on the adults, you should see something a lot more immediate than that. But anyway, a sale, then we've got Savanto, the Bayer product. Um, uh, folks have had some good success in Georgia with it. It's going to be pretty uh, on the expensive side, but uh, when you're talking about saving a crop or being able to market your cotton, uh, sometimes uh, you got to think in, uh, think in other boxes from what you would do in a normal situation. Uh, so, uh, in other words, what I'm saying is uh, if it makes a difference being able to market your cotton or not, uh, nothing may be out of the price range. Uh, Venom is another one that works on all stages. Savanto works on all stages. Venom works on all stages. And then we've got the one that, uh, that uh, Oberon, Oberon's in our recommendations for white flies, silver leaf white flies and nymphs. And it, it works primarily on nymphs, but it works on spider mites too. Oberon works on spider mites. Uh, is this a good point to stop and maybe take some questions? I don't want to use up all the time. Uh, uh, I, 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 Ron, I think we got cotton in about two different categories. I might be wrong, but I would say you got your later April and, and earlier May that's uh, pretty well going to cut out. It's a lot of bowls. It's not doesn't have as many white flies, but it does have some. And then you got the middle May on. It's got a lot of white flies, a lot of younger. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I, I guess I'd ask you about this the other day about how should we manage these older cotton in respect to the white flies. I don't think we should necessarily just let them go because you said manage them right up to the day of defoliation. What, what, what's your thoughts after you talk back to Philip on that? What, they, the, what they're going by in Georgia. If you've got, if you've got older cotton, if you've got white fly, if you've got, uh, if you've got honeydew on the leaves and older cotton, you need to spray. It. If you've got immatures underneath the leaves on this older cotton, you need to spray. Now, hopefully, on this older cotton, 
one application will buy us enough time to get us to defoliation. And that brings up another point. You need to be ready to defoliate as early as you can. Even push it, even push it up a little bit earlier than you would normally do. Getting the leaves off is the end of this thing. So you may, if he comes down to where you see the white flies building after you make one application, an earlier defoliation would probably be the route to go rather than trying to put on another one. Uh, the other thing, this may be really important, the wiregrass. You cannot allow, allow any regrowth on this cotton. If you defoliate and move to uh, dig peanuts for a while and come back to the cotton, if it greens back up, you're in a heap of trouble because that's like feeding white flies ice cream. You got your problem all over again. You've got to defoliate and get that cotton out of there before you get any green growth back in the terminal. Now, I don't know my defoliants, but you folks know them. Uh, it may make a choice as to what you want to use as, the, as part of your defoliation program. You cannot live with any regrowth. All right, uh, Tammy Long's got a question. If you're using venom, should you uh, tank mix an IGR? Well, if you've got an IGR, uh, why would you need to double up with venom? Uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that question, but I question why you would need to use two different modes there with one with one thing, if you, uh, unless you're trying to kill adults and that, and that would be that would be a possibility. That's going to cost you somewhat more. But venom would kill uh, venom would kill all stages. That would be the adults. I'm not sure if that's the best material to use on adults, but uh, that would be one. Maybe that's their their thought process of why they would want to use that with an IGR. Now, uh, Jerry Wise, he's been spraying, spraying citrus orchards in South Florida. He says down there they use dimethoate and uh, something like bathroid or something a little longer lasting pyrethroid on those citrus trees for white flies. What's your thoughts in respect to that now, Ron? I don't have any idea on that. Uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will share a couple of things, uh, though. Uh, not, I don't know specifically about dimethoate. I hadn't thought about that, but that leaves up a good point that I picked up out in California. Uh, anybody got any old Curacron? Any Curacron still in a warehouse anywhere? If it is, this would be a great place to get it out. Uh, Curacron has activity on the adults. Lord's band has activity on adults. Anybody still stocking Lord's band? I know we don't use it much on cotton, but. Uh, that's that's some options now as we get on down in the in the lower in the barrel. That's some things that might work. Uh, All right, they, we got we got another question. Like, okay. if they harvest cotton and bush hog the stalks, and you got a lot of regrowth, you know, that's just going to be a nursery for them. What's the plan? That's, that's they going they going to use that to keep building. Uh, now it would okay. not get on your cotton though while you're waiting, but you would keep them in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be my thought on that. You know, what we got to do is separate our cotton from the white flies, and you would have it separated once you harvest it. Right. We just got to hope for a cold winter, something to suppress these things before next year. And then we got to, we got to, I've already started uh, what I call a management, a management program for white flies. But I tell you what, the, the most important thing, there's two things here next year. God, we've got to plant as early as we can. You've got to get your cotton as mature as you can before these white flies build up moody cotton. And you've got to use a smooth leaf cotton. You've got to do those two things right up front next year. So variety selection planting date is going to be how we're going to attack this thing from the beginning next year. You really, you're really going to spend a lot of money anytime you have to control these things over a long period of time. And that's the reason that I'm real pessimistic about our late planted cotton, like June planted cotton. I see no way that we can keep white flies off of this late planted cotton. And by the way, they prefer late planted cotton. 
they really are not building as fast right now on older planted cotton as they are on the young cotton. They're gonna build, build a lot faster on young cotton. I don't see any way we're gonna be able to go from now to early November to foliate in this late planted June cotton. I don't see any way we can do it. You're gonna spend more than the cotton's ever worth. Uh, now a couple of things. Uh, as the temperatures go down this fall, the silver leaf white fly life cycle will get a little bit longer. So that will, that will be in our favor. Also, if you've got any cotton under irrigation now, you can actually uh, irrigate and wash this, uh, like right now, you can wash this uh, honeydew off the leaves with the irrigation system. And of course you wouldn't want to do that probably after the uh, after the cottons began to open, but right before it opens, that would be a good thing to get it off. And you'll have to probably take care of the white flies at the same time. Uh, did I mention, I mentioned lower, okay. Let me go back and tell you one, uh, one, one combination that the folks in California use. They kind of use a sequence and they rotate the chemicals around. The way they manage them in San Joaquin White Valley is uh, uh, they use Oberon first on their first shot. They try to get three or four weeks out of Oberon. And, uh, and then they come back with a combination of capture or bifenthrin, lower's band, and a quart, and courier. Now that's pretty expensive, but they're looking at probably three plus bale cotton out there. Uh, and uh, so they try, to, they try to do that, and that would, that would take care of both the nymphs and the adults. So, uh, and they, they mentioned this uh, orthene plus curacron, it's something they it used to work in the past. Uh, another thing that I picked up out there, four or five adults on a leaf will give you economic levels in one generation. Mm. Say that again. Four or five, four or five adults on a leaf, 15 to 18 days, you're going to have an economic level. Okay. So if you want to kind of go by how many adults you're seeing. That's, that's something they've learned out in California. Uh, there's some folks in Georgia that's tried orthene plus bifenthrin on a schedule once a week. Did not work. The white flies are building on. Uh, let me tell you a couple other things here that I picked up. Uh, Uh, if they get on beans, and, and Wes Briggs told me the hottest area for white flies right now is down in uh, down uh, on the Alabama Florida line, uh, it's on the edge of Jackson County. He says that's the hottest hottest place uh, they've got right now, and they're on beans down there too. Tim, you uh, Tim has taken calls from our, our uh, IPM agent that we work with down in Mariana yesterday afternoon and again this morning. Uh, he's got them on beans down there. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention, uh, you know, Centric, some folks have tried to use Centric, but other folks have kind of said that Centric didn't do a very good job on their adults. But, uh, uh, and it's not labeled on beans. But if you're looking for an alternative there, Indigo, which has Centric in it, uh, Thymotox, is that Town, uh, Centric? What? Okay. Okay, uh, but indigo is labeled on beans, so if you could get that combination. Also, one more thought here I'm going to throw out, and there's no university research behind this, but Prevathon has activity on the silver leaf white fly. So if you're dealing with loopers on soybeans, Prevathon or Besiege, which has Prevathon in it, would be a, an option there. And that would be true on peanuts too. Yes, sir. Look uh -huh. Where you put methylated seed oil yeah. with that? Methylated seed oil. Uh, yeah, who told, somebody told me that yesterday and I just overlooked that in my notes. Uh, now what was he putting it with? Prevathon. Prevathon. Uh, we know Prevathon goes into the plant from the way it works on other crops and other pests. So you might want to remember that. That's not a cheap product either, but uh, uh, it has some activity. Would that be an optional cut? I don't know how effective, I don't know if it would offset the cost or not. If you had nothing else, it would be worth a try. 
but uh, like Al said, I believe I'd try the, the seed oil with it. Uh, that's going to do it. We've even thought of stuff like neem oil. Uh, nobody's uh, nobody's talked much about neem oil. I don't know if it works or not. Some people have uh, even mentioned about putting Dawn soap out there. Comment on that now, Ron. Well, I don't have any idea. Uh, you know, some of those things will work around the house uh, on scale insects. Whether or not they'll work on a big field, I, I don't know. The only response I've got out of that is that a consultant out of Barber County said they'd done some research with it, and he, he claims that didn't see any real results out of that. So it's now, but, but you know, I, you yeah. hear this, and I'm not saying that's the only answer either. Let me, uh, let me tell you one other thing <laughs> that uh, I would probably not try. Back when we had beet army worms, uh, some folks thought if we put some hot pepper on them, it, it'd burn them. It, it burn them. So, let me just say the hot pepper thing has already come up on white flies, but I would be willing to bet you that uh, that hot pepper probably is not going to work on them. So I wouldn't go to that. I wouldn't go to that ex extreme. All right, let's just talk a while now, uh, uh, or ask questions or something like that. I'll I'll give you. A, best answer and if anybody else in the room has got an answer to any of these uh, I'm just here to learn now we're amongst we're gonna swap information what we're gonna do from this point on I've told you everything I know already go ahead Scott. is the secretion of the honeydew only in the adult stage that's a good question uh, and I asked that question because I thought the immatures were doing all the secretion of the honeydew but Dr. Roberts, University of Georgia, says sometime you can see honeydew on the top leaves where the adults are at. So that tells me that they have the ability to secrete honeydew to some level. And a lot of these, uh, a lot of these infestations, just like what we sprayed this morning, there's a few aphids in with the mix. There's been aphids in the mix here for the last month, I think, a low number of aphids. And some of this honeydew may be coming from them, but I haven't seen a, a population yet where the aphids have died off. They don't die off as rapidly this time of the year from that natural occurring fungus as they do back in June and July. So it could be a little bit, but I'm, I'm telling you, this white fly is going to dominate the aphid. You know, I wouldn't worry about the aphid. What they add to it's not going to mount to much. All right, I've, I've also heard you say, uh, Ron, that to not spray any more badrin. Vibrant, well, let me just tell you, what do we do if we want to create a problem on the farm to do research on white flies? We plant late, we plant a hairy leaf cotton, and we spray it every week with bivin. Is that enough said? Bifenthrin to do everything for you right now, the rest of this season, that you need for bivin. And you probably want to rethink that. I, mean, I don't know if the bivin folks are in the room or not, but uh, they're going to have to be part of this whole big plan. and. Uh, Bifenthrin is not as aggravating on them as Bifenthrin is. Well, uh, here's another question that came in from a farmer. It says, why worry about using, why worry about treating this younger cotton if you're saying that we can't control them or carry it to harvest? Well, I'm not saying you can't carry it to harvest, but I'm not sure it'd be worth anything when you get there with the sticky stuff. In, uh, and I think this white fly is going to continue to build uh, that's going to be the hardest question. And, and I'm not telling you to abandon late planted cotton, but uh, uh, the outlook is not good. I got the outlook question. is not good. We got some cotton that's probably 50, 60% open. Yeah. All right, when we go looking at that cotton when we get back home, if we're not finding the sticky stuff, we're finding, I know the stuff's there, we saw it last week. They weren't to the we level of adults. Yeah, the other adults are there. We didn't find. Maybe the nymphs are threshold barely. They're, they're, but they're my thing them. is, we're not having that sticky stuff right now. If the cotton's already 60% open, where do you, you think we had it? What do you think? Uh, if the white flies you are do, You don't know if the adult, uh, the immature is there or not. We did not spray them last they week. Were, they, they were, were at threshold last week. They weren't at threshold. A few there, but not a threshold. But you're no, not seeing any hundred of you right now. We weren't then. We're going back today. Go back and today. look. I mean, that's the kind of cotton I'd try to cut my, cut, save my money on. I would put my resources, I mean, if I could defoliate within, you know, we've got cotton that, uh, a lot of cotton will be ready to defoliate for September 25th, but we're not going to make it from here to there on a lot of this cotton, but I feel like you're talking about. This is playing mid-April. Yeah, mid-April. Earlier variety. Uh, I try to use defoliation as my control tool there. 
Let me put my resources on another younger cotton. Now, this June cotton is what concerns me. I can't tell you. You, you know your wallet, uh, the growers know their wallet better than I do, but I can tell you it's a long time till November fighting white flies. And I, see, I just don't see how economically we can control white flies or keep them under control that long uh, and, and have anything left in profit-wise. I mean, I, I hate to use the word abandon, but uh, that may be a word that somebody has to consider. Hey, Dr. Ron, we're getting reports out of Georgia that Citrus was doing a great job on those. Are you hearing different? Yeah, uh, yeah, they, I've gotten reports that Centric has not done that good a job on the dope. Uh, don't think we can live with Centric alone. Again, more so for the distributors, what is available? Do what now? More so, I guess, for some of these boys themselves, but what's available? Let's see, I can't tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's the important thing. What is available, and is there any chance of getting any more in? Now, uh, correct me, uh, NAC, uh, they're not manufacturing any more NAC. Uh, uh, so NAC and Venom, Venom, what's in the house right now will be all that we have till December. NAC, there's going to be a little bit more made. Who necessarily gets it, there will be some that a little bit that would flow into Alabama, but it's a small part. It's been spoken for for weeks. For the most part, everything is tight. If it is available, it's not available now. Yeah. It's two weeks. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the easiest thing to get around. Do what now? Sabanto is one of the easiest thing to get. Yeah. We've yeah. got some. Yeah. So yeah, now uh, and, and Ron is his question is saying so so you're saying even after your treatment you say they'll come back, right? They're gonna be coming back. There's gonna be multiple treatments on this yeah, late I mean, planting. You can't just most of the time we are not gonna be able to treat these one time and, and think the problem is gone. Okay. Minimum of two. Yeah. Minimum of two. What about after two? It's not, it's not now I had heard I don't uh, I, I had heard they may be they may have cranked the plant back up on no. courier. Yes. Does anybody know that? All right, so I'm Riley. I'm with Nietzsche Dove. I'm the courier guy. Uh, right now we've got a waiting list in Georgia. We're going to be getting some more here September 4th, and then we're uh, that's already spoken for. September 11th we'll have more. But like I said, there's a waiting list. Please don't shoot your distributors. It's not their fault. Manufacturers. We're trying our best to try to you know make as much as we can, but. This whole situation has kind of caught everybody off guard. So we're trying our best. And uh, just if you need some, please ask your distributor, put you on the list, and they'll order it. And then we'll get it to you all as soon as we can. <clears throat> Thank you all. I think that's, a, that's another point. I mean, you have to, because this stuff is so tight, you have to look at your fields and decide which one you need to spray. Because when it's out, it's out. Yeah. I mean, it's, I would try to put my resources where you're going to get the greatest return from them, and, and uh, unfortunately, that's probably not going to be on June planted cotton. We need to sign, we need to save all this earlier planted cotton we can. Uh, and do you agree with that? Okay. Has anybody heard anything after two treatments? I mean, is that does that seem to be? I mean, because you know, I mean, if it ain't, I, <laughs> I, mean, no, I don't. As long as, as long as the condition is there and the population is there, it's basically continuing to grow. So uh, you have to look at, a, at an economic, I mean, do I want to spray this thing three, four times at $20 an acre? I think what they're trying to do, y'all correct me now, is they're trying to buy about two weeks of uh, when they spray any of these things. They're trying to buy about two weeks of time of suppression or control. And so you can kind of calculate that out. Uh, even the NACs and the couriers uh, probably would have to reapply after about two weeks. And particularly if you use uh, the five ounce rate of NAC, you'd probably want to come back with the other five ounces uh, in two weeks. Talking about the, uh, about them entering in a lower band again, how, what, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. I just know what the gentleman in California told me that uh, because they were tank mixing it out there as part of a three way mix with courier because we wouldn't have the courier. Uh, but uh, there's products like Lord's Band and Curacron that uh, what we had in it, it would be worth a, worth a try, those kind of products. And dimethyl weight may be one of those like that. 
that would have some activity. I just don't know about any of those. But I'm just saying, if you've got some sitting around in the back of the warehouse, it'd be worth a try. Did they mention a the radio up in Lowe's Band? Port, Port of Lowe's Band, because they was mixing it by Fentran and Courier, but a port was the radio. So, Dr. Ron, if you had some older cotton that uh, you're wanting to carry a little bit further, would that be a good place? Let's try the Lowe's Band. Yeah, that would be a good good place to try it. Uh, but man, you know we're just grabbing at straws now when we do stuff like that. It's a trial basis. Is the potential to flare and bet worse when we go to these products like Warman and Dominant? I wouldn't think so. I mean, those are hard chemicals, but if they've got any controlled activity, it shouldn't aggravate. I mean, there's probably not many beneficials out here in these fields anyway. Now, uh, that's back at, during the season when we're going to try to use them and uh, go selective chemistry. Uh, now, uh, I don't think selective chemistry makes much difference now, although I still wouldn't use Vidrin because what we, it's something about Vidrin that just excites them, makes them multiply faster. Some people have uh, wondered about the effect, effectiveness of a uh, diamond. Can you tell me about that? Good, good, uh, good question. Diamond is an IGR. We did some of the first work on diamonds ever been done on immature plant boats. Uh, and it is a perfect product for that. Uh, it also works on a few beneficial species. One is the big eye boat. It will zero them out along with immature plant boats. But we have looked at diamond for worm control and it's very similar to the untreated. I'm talking about bow worms, bud worms, and cotton. The plots will be very similar to the untreated plots. Uh, and this is on conventional cotton. Uh, we have looked at diamond on stink bugs, and you gotta go way out of label range to kill stink bugs with, uh, with diamond. I don't have any clue what it would do on silver leaf white fly, but just because it's an IGR doesn't mean it has the same activity as knack and courier, you know. It, it is it's an IGR, but on certain species. And uh, nobody in other states has mentioned diamond, period, for civil leaf white fly. As desperate as Georgia is, nobody's mentioned diamond. That's all I know about it. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be anywhere near my choice to I even try. I think the label says suppression, right? Yeah, the label does. The label on, uh, on diamond does say suppression. Uh, a number of years ago, EPA changed the rules. You didn't have to have data to put anything on the label. And, uh, and so basically you can put about anything on there you want to. And if you say suppression, that tells me right away, it's fairly weak. And we don't even know if they're talking about when it says white flies on there, they may be talking about the banded wing of white fly, which is a lot easier to kill, a lot easier to kill. So. Uh, you can't you can't really put much stock in what's on the label, other than that does make it legal. Now, diamond is going to be more like a program approach too. I mean, it's not going to solve your problem right now, but yeah. you might have less of a problem should you have been on the table. Well, you know, somebody may know that. I don't even know that, uh, Bo. Uh, I don't know. I just don't have any idea. It's, it's a, it's a less it's a lesser of two evils when you look at yeah. one that's fixing to clear something up yeah. versus another one that can help you and give you a wider range of control. Yeah. It may not have anything to do with a white fly, but it may push it somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Hey, backtrack just a second. I, I'm not sure if I was clear. The bifithrin plus orphane, did y'all say that would not do anything? That has not done the job for the folks in Georgia. Okay, I read an article from Texas A&M had out, you know, and that was one of their treatments, and that was a question I had, so I just yeah. wondered. Well, those products have both been used in other places for yeah. some time. They've been uh, added to another one, and I remember when that thing blew up in Texas in the Rio Grande Valley, it, it, put, it put them out of business just about uh, down there, and I looked back at my notes, and I had a whole file on, on stuff that came out that year, and it was 92 and 93. And uh, it, was so, it was so bad they had to cancel football games in the fall. They couldn't play football in those areas. Uh, when I talked to Philip about three or four weeks ago, he said I was going into, going into Walmart and Tifton and said it's snowing over here. But you can see them and, around. You can and see and them. we saw them when we got out this morning.
Uh, any other questions? Uh, I don't have to stand up here. If anybody else wants to uh, have the floor, y'all. I just want to make a comment. Yeah, about okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. I talked to one of my co workers and uh, results. The best results is where you start before the population explodes. You know, you control 90% of the adults and you still got yeah. too many. They're getting up to their best results. They're getting up to three weeks control. They're putting all the water they can with it and putting a surfactant. The MSO might work. He said, please just, it's just, you know, that little bit of water is, if you, I wouldn't say you'd be throwing your money away, but you wouldn't be getting much yeah. else. And we will probably eventually run out of Sabanto also. We, we have a good bit in Albany at this time. But it's it's pricey. Uh, I won't make a price, but I think I've heard Andy and Jordan $28 acre or something like that. How much? 28 28 yeah, yeah. Depending on your rates, you know, right. you yeah. cut an ounce off and pay save $6 yeah. or something yeah. like that. Uh, there is a $34 rate, uh, yeah. but that would be the extra ounce, I guess. Yeah. What's it, 10 to 14? Ounce? Yeah, they're using 10 and a half ounces. Yeah. Yeah. So, and but I mean, depending on availability of whatever's available, it ranges from right. 20 to 35. Yeah. From yeah. one to three. So. NAC is five ounces. Why? Well, NAC is actually recommended at 10 ounces. Georgia has a state label because they found out if they could put five out and follow that two weeks later with another five, that they were, that was acceptable way of using it. So, I uh, that's the way I suggest. They're telling Thomas, us though, don't mix by fifthrin with it. They just told us spray NAC if you did. Uh, I don't know if they're mixing by fifthrin or not, but I don't believe I. Are they are they mixing by fifthrin with it, Jordan? I would advise NAC by itself because of its activity. It depends on where you're at and adults. We can talk on that. But you know, venom, venom, you could if you want, but uh, really no need to. Hey, I appreciate that. You're only act to act clockwise. I minimize my yeah. I mix. Uh, thanks for those comments, Jerry and uh, Savanto. Make. Maybe used up before it's over. I think we run out. Yeah. Not what George is, you know. Yeah. The acres. We will run out. Anybody else got any anything? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm out of answers, but we can bounce some things around, get opinions if that's uh, if that's all that's left. Al, you got your resistant management plan ready for next year, and you got your smooth leaf varieties ready. Harvey's going to eat some of that. Huh? Harvey's going to eat some of that Saturday morning. Hurricane Harvey when it comes into Texas. Okay. Mm. I just talked to some of my buddies out there. The Corpus area is about 98% done, but we got a fair amount of seed production in some other areas. Oh, okay, okay, I got you, got you. Yeah. Okay. Steve, let me address that with Bifin for the NAC. So it's going to be a timing again of when your cotton's planted. If you're talking into some of the June planting, then I'm going to say NAC by itself because you want the longest residual that you can. If it's some of this that you want, it's late April, early May, and you're just saying I'm going to one time be done, I'm going to make one application and then defoliate, then that would be fine. By Fenthrin would be okay in that. Yeah, that sounds like good advice. Avail. Do we know much about Avail? Uh, avail, is, uh, avail is real high on their preference in Georgia. It's just that. Uh, 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 not avail. A sale. A sale. Yeah. Uh, and it it had it has activity on all stages. Uh, is all of it named a sale now? You know, originally it was intruded. Is everything a sale now? I don't know. Sales thirty and sales seventy. That's right. I mean, you, you got two different, two different products yeah. called Striper, S-T-R-A-Y-F-E-R, it's like a little cotton, it's got a seed of every day. From the Mississippi boys mentioned it, I just look at it on my, you can pull it up real. Yeah. Uh, 
a sale is about the third, prefer, uh, number three preferred product in Georgia. NAC is number one, Curry is number two, a sale is number three. Then these other things we're talking about is down the list a little bit lower. Uh, Savanto, I think, is next, but they probably haven't. If, if, if Savanto was cheaper, it'd be much higher. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably part of it. Uh, and, and they probably don't have as much experience with Savanto as they do some of these other products either. Buy Fenthern with the Savanto, Jerry. Huh? Buy Fenthern with Savanto or no? It's sort of, test it's, Dr. Rod. I don't know. Is it sort of like what, what well, David said? All I can say is the way it works on sugar cane aphids, I don't see the need to mix anything with it. It's smoking. Yeah. But I don't know what it'd be. I, I, I wouldn't think it would want to anything. No. You think it would be the first thing for the way to go? Yeah. I don't know. My friends won't do anything on knocking down the stove. Well, I, they putting it in there for something. I'm, 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 I wouldn't say so because we've been paying my fitter and all year. Yeah, we, we, we spray my fitter and every spray. Yeah. We put, so we, they built up right through by fitter. Right. Yeah. That's true. We did it four ounces every time we spray. Four, five, four, five, five right. every time we spray cotton. Good thing. You know. I'll say this: we do have some cotton in Dale County. And there's like four to three or four farmers in one big field there. I mean, just field roads separate. Field roads separate. And our neighbors got younger cotton down here. We were in that cotton last Saturday. Our pressure was low there. And I said, I bet it's in his. And I walked across the field road in his and in that young. That's where they are. That's so you're telling me if the pressure was worse in the younger cotton? Yeah, and nothing separate no, no comparison. Yeah. No yeah. comparison. Uh, there's no question they prefer younger cotton. That's the reason we can't have any younger cotton next year. What you're saying, if you did have some of that June cotton, you might be ahead just to go ahead and destroy it to keep. Yeah, that's, I don't know enough about the ramifications of yeah. uh, insurance programs and well, stuff that's like true. that. I, didn't think about I don't know anything about those kind of things, but. Uh, but I can tell you, it could be, I just can't see where it's going to be profitable to keep yeah, going with the younger, with June planting cotton. Uh, that, and I mentioned this melon thing now. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all growing melons along with your cotton. I tell you, I'd be as far away from melon production as I could get next year. <laughs> I wouldn't rent a field. I wouldn't rent land. I wouldn't rent land near melon production. They're going to get you first. You're, you're automatically looking at at least an additional application. So they're going to get in those fields first. Melons and cotton don't mix when it comes to white flies. Well, listen, uh, I don't know. I don't have any other information. Uh, a lot of what we've said here at the tail end is just a uh, uh, judge, you know, would you mix this or would you do this or this, that, and the other. But I do know that uh, we need to save this old cotton. If it's got honeydew on it, you're probably not going to get to the foliation without saving it unless you're going to foliate it real quick. Uh, and uh, we're going to we're gonna have to do a lot of planning and not get in this plan to try to, not to get in this position next year. The winter may help us. A dry, dry summer would have made it worse, like I said before. We could be, we could be in a worse shape. Any, any parting questions? Uh, I mean, we can hang around here and talk as long as you want to. It doesn't have to be formal, but uh, uh, we're going to be around here a while. Uh. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ron. We appreciate it. If anybody has any questions out there live, just. Uh, Oh, well, here, here's a question that just come in, said if I can get it to come up. There's no growth regulating uh, material out here to really uh, mess with them, is there? That you, that you, I, that was the question. I don't know any growth regulating materials that there's any evidence that has activity on white flies other than the ones we're already using. Okay. All right. If anybody else has any questions out there is walk, uh, watching live, just go ahead and text them to me, and I'll try to uh, respond with your uh, with the answer to your question. Thank you for joining us.